This video is going to analyze a sequential digital logic circuit and determine the maximum frequency that it can operate at and also verify that it meets the hold time requirements for the sequential logic elements. And so in this particular example we're going to look at a 30-bit carry look-ahead adder that was analyzed in another video that is placed between two blocks of flip-flops and we want to determine what is the maximum frequency that this adder could be run at if the inputs come from a flip-flop and the results are fed out to another set of flip-flops. So overall there are two things we have to look at. The minimum clock period that is possible as well as whether or not we meet hold time. So we're going to start off with the clock period. So the minimum clock period that we could operate this circuit under would be a combination of the delay that it takes to get through the flip-flop to get our input data out of the flip-flops plus the propagation delay through our combination of logic, which in this case is our carry look ahead adder, plus the setup time that we need to have our results available for the flip-flop ahead of time or before the setup time occurs. And then finally, we need to account for any skew or any differences between when the clocks arrive at the, the two banks of flip-flops. And so three of these elements come directly from the specifications that we're given, in, which is shown in the table to the right. The one that is not that we have to determine a little bit more in detail is the propagation delay of the combination of logic. And so in another video, it was found that the propagation delay for this 30-bit carry look-ahead adder with three-bit blocks was found to be the max of either an AND gate or an OR gate, two times the delay of an AND plus an OR gate, nine times the delay of an AND plus an OR gate, and then finally three times the delay of an AND and an OR gate. And so basically from this point we can take things from the table and plug it into this equation. So we have a maximum of either 20 or 25, so that is 25 for the max here from the OR gates, and then we have a total of 14 and an OR gate, so we have 14, and then we have the AND plus the OR gate, and so that gives us a total delay of 655 picoseconds for just the combinational logic, and then to determine the overall minimum clock period, we would take the propagation delay of our flip-flop, which is given as 50, the combinational logic delay of 655, the setup time of 40, and then finally the skew we have of 35 picoseconds, and we would find that this equals 780 picoseconds, and then a lot of times we're interested in the maximum frequency that we can run a circuit at, and so the maximum frequency is just the inverse of the minimum clock period. And so in this case, we could find that we could run this circuit at 1.28 gigahertz. And we could certainly run at a slower frequency, but we could not run it at a higher frequency and still meet our timing. So that's how we look at the setup time and the maximum frequency we can run at. We're also interested in making sure that it doesn't violate the hold time for our flip-flops. And so for this, we need to make sure that the hold time plus any clock skew that we have is less than or equal to the minimum path through this circuit. So that would be the quickest time it could get out of the flip-flop plus the quickest path through the combinational logic. And so for the combinational logic, in our other video it was found that this is just the delay or the shortest path is just the delay through a single AND gate and a single OR gate. And in this case, we're looking at the entries for the contamination delay or the shortest time through each of these. So we have 15 plus 20, saying that the shortest time through our combinational logic would be 35 picoseconds. And then if we put this into the equation, we've got 25 picoseconds for a whole time, a skew of 35, and we're interested, is that less than 30 plus 35, and we find out after doing the math that indeed 60 is less than 65, and so we meet our hold time, and so we could reasonably operate this circuit at 1.28 gigahertz while not violating any of our timing specifications. 